Umberto Eco, Italian, Um Co, 5 January 1932 to 19 February 2016 was an Italian novelist, literary critic, philosopher, semiotician, and university professor. He is best known internationally for his 1980 novel Il Nome della Rosa The Name of the Rose, a historical mystery combining semiotics in fiction with biblical analysis, medieval studies, and literary theory. He later wrote other novels, including Il Pendolo di Foucault's Pendulum, and L'Isola del Giorno Prima, The Island of the Day Before. His novel Il Cimitero di Praga, The Prague Cemetery, released in 2010, topped the bestseller charts in Italy. Eco also wrote academic texts, children's books, and essays. He was the founder of the Department of Media Studies at the University of the Republic of San Marino, president of the Graduate School for the Study of the Humanities at the University of Bologna, member of the Academia dei Lincei, and an honorary fellow of Kellogg College, Oxford. Eco was honored with the Kenyan Review Award for Literary Achievement in 2005 along with Roger Angel. Topic: Life Eco was born in the city of Alessandria, in Piedmont in northern Italy, and here he attended high school. His father, Giulio, one of thirteen children, was an accountant before the government called him to serve in three wars. During World War II, Umberto and his mother, Giovanna Bizio, moved to a small village in the Piedmontese mountainside. Eco received a Salesian education and made references to the order and its founder in his works and interviews. His family name is supposedly an acronym of Ex Calis Oblatus from Latin, a gift from the heavens, which was given to his grandfather a foundling by a city official. Umberto's father urged him to become a lawyer, but he entered the University of Turin to take up medieval philosophy and literature, writing his thesis on Thomas Aquinas and earning a Laurea degree in philosophy in 1954. During his university studies, Eco stopped believing in God and left the Catholic Church. After that, Eco worked as a cultural editor for the state broadcasting station Radio Television Italiana Rai and lectured at the University of Turin 1956 1964. A group of avant-garde artists, painters, musicians and writers, whom he had befriended at Rai, Gruppo 63, became an important and influential component in Eco's writing career. This was especially true after the publication of his first book in 1956, Il Problema Estetico in San Tommaso, which was an extension of his Laurea thesis. This also marked the beginning of his lecturing career at his alma mater. In September 1962 he married Renata Ramga, a German art teacher with whom he had a son and a daughter. He divided his time between an apartment in Milan and a vacation house near Urbino. He had a 30,000-volume library in the former and a 20,000-volume library in the latter. He was a visiting professor at Columbia University several times in the 1980s and 1990s. In 1992-1993 Eco was the Norton Professor at Harvard University. On 8 May 1993, Eco received an Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters DHL from Indiana University Bloomington in recognition of his over 15-year association with the university's Research Center for Language and Semiotic Studies. Six books that were authored, co-authored, or co-edited by Eco were published by Indiana University Press. In 1996, he was appointed Honorary Doctor of Philosophy of the University of Tartu. He frequently collaborated with his friend Thomas Sebiak, semiotician and distinguished professor of linguistics at Indiana University. He became satrap of the College de Pataphysique in 2001. On 23 May 2002, Eco received an honorary Doctor of Letters D. Lit. from Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. In 2009, the University of Belgrade in Serbia awarded him an honorary doctorate. Eco was a member of the Italian skeptic organization Comitato Italiano per il Controllo della Affermazione sul Pseudoscience Italian Committee for the Investigation of Claims of the Pseudosciences CICAP. Eco died at his Milanese home of pancreatic cancer, from which he had been suffering for two years, on the night of 19 February 2016. At the time of his death at the age of 84, he was a professor emeritus at the University of Bologna, a position that he had held since 2008. Topic. Professional and academic activity Topic. Studies on medieval aesthetics 
In 1959 Eco published his second book, Sviluppo dell'estetica medieval The Development of Medieval Aesthetics, on Medieval Philosophy. After 18 months military service in the Italian army, he left Rai in 1959 to become the senior non-fiction editor of the Bompiani Publishing House in Milan, a position he occupied until 1975. Topic. Literary criticism Eco began seriously developing his ideas on the open text and on semiotics, writing many essays on these subjects, and in 1962 he published Opera Aperta, translated into English as The Open Work. In it, Eco argued that literary texts are fields of meaning, rather than strings of meaning, and that they are understood as open, internally dynamic, and psychologically engaged fields. Literature which limits one's potential understanding to a single, unequivocal line, the closed text, remains the least rewarding, while texts that are the most active between mind, society and life open texts are the liveliest and best—although valuation terminology was not his primary focus. Eco came to these positions through study of language and from semiotics, rather than from psychology or historical analysis as did theorists such as Wolfgang Iser, on the one hand, and Hans Robert Haas, on the other. Topic. Studies on media culture Eco's short 1961 essay, Phenomenologia di Mike Bongiorno, Phenomenology of Mike Bongiorno, on the most popular quiz show host in Italy, received much notoriety among the general public and has drawn endless questions by journalists at every public appearance by Eco. The essay was later included in the collection Diario Minimo. 1963. His book Apocalittici e Integrati analyzes the phenomenon of mass communication from a sociological perspective. In 1967 he gave the influential lecture, "...towards a semiological guerrilla warfare," which coined the influential term, "...semiological guerrilla," and influenced the theorization of guerrilla tactics against mainstream mass media culture, such as guerrilla television and culture jamming. Among the expressions used in the essay are communications guerrilla warfare and cultural guerrilla. The essay was later included in Eco's book Faith in Fakes. In 2012, Eco and Jean-Claude Carrière published a book of conversations on the future of information carriers. Eco criticized social networks, saying for example that Social media gives legions of idiots the right to speak when they once only spoke at a bar after a glass of wine, without harming the community. But now they have the same right to speak as a Nobel Prize winner. It's the invasion of the idiots. Semiotics <inaudible> 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 Eco founded and developed one of the most important approaches in contemporary semiotics, usually referred to as interpretive semiotics. The main books in which he elaborates his theory are La struttura ascente literally, The Absent Structure, A Theory of Semiotics The Role of the Reader Semiotics and Philosophy of Language The Limits of Interpretation Kant and the Platypus and From the Tree to the Labyrinth, Historical Studies on the Sign and Interpretation Eco co-founded Versus, Quaderni di Studi Semiotici known as VS among Italian academics, a semiotic journal. VS is used by scholars whose work is related to signs and signification. The journal's foundation and activities have contributed to semiotics as an academic field in its own right, both in Italy and in the rest of Europe. Most of the well-known European semioticians, including Eco, A. J. Grimas, Jean-Marie Flock, and Jacques Fontenelle, as well as philosophers and linguists like John Searle and George Lakoff, have published original articles in verses. His work with Serbian and Russian scholars and writers included thought on Milorad Pavic and a meeting with Alexander Genis. Anthropology In 1988, at the University of Bologna, Eco created an unusual program called Anthropology of the West from the perspective of non-Westerners African and Chinese scholars, as defined by their own criteria. Eco developed this transcultural international network based on the idea of Alain Le Pichon in West Africa. 
The Bologna program resulted in the first conference in Guangzhou, China, in 1991 entitled, Frontiers of Knowledge. The first event was soon followed by an itinerant Euro-Chinese seminar on misunderstandings in the quest for the universal along the silk trade route from Guangzhou to Beijing. The latter culminated in a book entitled The Unicorn and the Dragon, which discussed the question of the creation of knowledge in China and in Europe. Scholars contributing to this volume were from China, including Tang Yiji, Wang Bin and Yu Deyun, as well as from Europe, Furio Colombo, Antoine Danchin, Jacques Le Goff, Paolo Fabri and Alain Ray. In 2000 a seminar in Timbuktu, Mali, was followed up with another gathering in Bologna to reflect on the conditions of reciprocal knowledge between East and West. This, in turn, gave rise to a series of conferences in Brussels, Paris and Goa, culminating in Beijing in 2007. The topics of the Beijing Conference were Order and Disorder New Concepts of War and Peace Human Rights and Social Justice and Harmony ECO presented the opening lecture. Among those giving presentations were anthropologists Balvir Arora, Varun Sani, and Rukmini Bayanair from India, Musa Sao from Africa, Roland Marty and Maurice Allender from Europe, Cha Insik from Korea, and Huang Ping and Zhao Tinyang from China. Also on the program were scholars from the fields of law and science including Antoine Danchin, Ahmed Jabbar and Dieter Grimm. ECO's interest in East-West dialogue to facilitate international communication and understanding also correlates with his related interest in the international auxiliary language Esperanto. Topic. Style and works Topic. Themes. Eco's fiction has enjoyed a wide audience around the world, with many translations. His novels are full of subtle, often multilingual, references to literature and history. Eco's work illustrates the concept of intertextuality, or the interconnectedness of all literary works. Eco cited James Joyce and Jorge Luis Borges as the two modern authors who have influenced his work the most. Topic. Selected narrative works. Eco employed his education as a medievalist in his first novel The Name of the Rose 1980, a historical mystery set in a 14th-century monastery. Franciscan friar William of Baskerville, aided by his assistant Adza, a Benedictine novice, investigates a series of murders at a monastery that is to host an important religious debate. The novel contains many direct or indirect metatextual references to other sources, requiring the detective work of the reader to solve. The title is unexplained in the book. As a symbol, the rose is ubiquitous enough not to confer any single meaning. There is a tribute to Jorge Luis Borges, a major influence on Eco, in the blind monk and librarian Jorge of Burgos. Borges, like the character Jorge, lived a celibate life consecrated to his passion for books, and also went blind in later life. William of Baskerville is a logically minded Englishman who is a friar and a detective, and his name evokes both William of Ockham and Sherlock Holmes by way of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Several passages describing him are strongly reminiscent of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's descriptions of Holmes. The underlying mystery of the murder is borrowed from the Arabian Nights. The Name of the Rose was later made into a motion picture starring Sean Connery, F. Murray Abraham, Christian Slater and Ron Perlman, which follows the plot, though not the philosophical and historical themes, of the novel, in Foucault's Pendulum 1988, three underemployed editors who work for a minor publishing house decide to amuse themselves by inventing a conspiracy theory. Their conspiracy, which they call, The Plan is about an immense and intricate plot to take over the world by a secret order descended from the Knights Templar. As the game goes on, the three slowly become obsessed with the details of this plan. The game turns dangerous when outsiders learn of the plan, and believe that the men have really discovered the secret to regaining the lost treasure of the Templars. The Island of the Day Before 1994 was Eco's third novel. The book, set in the 17th century, is about a man stranded on a ship within sight of an island which he believes is on the other side of the international date line. The main character is trapped by his inability to swim and instead spends the bulk of the book reminiscing on his life and the adventures that brought him to be stranded. Badalino was published in 2000. Badalino is a knight who saves the Byzantine historian Nikitas Choniates during the sack of Constantinople in the Fourth Crusade. 
Claiming to be an accomplished liar, he confides his history, from his childhood as a peasant lad endowed with a vivid imagination, through his role as adopted son of Emperor Frederick Barbarossa, to his mission to visit the mythical realm of Prester John. Throughout his retelling, Bottolino brags of his ability to swindle and tell tall tales, leaving the historian and the reader unsure of just how much of his story was a lie. The Mysterious Flame of Queen Loana 2005 is about Giambattista Bodoni, an old bookseller specializing in antiques who emerges from a coma with only some memories to recover his past. Bodoni is pressed to make a very difficult choice, one between his past and his future. He must either abandon his past to live his future or regain his past and sacrifice his future. The Prague Cemetery, Eco's sixth novel, was published in 2010. It is the story of a secret agent who weaves plots, conspiracies, intrigues and attacks, and helps determine the historical and political fate of the European continent. The book is a narrative of the rise of modern-day antisemitism, by way of the Dreyfus Affair, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion and other important 19th-century events which gave rise to hatred and hostility toward the Jewish people. Numero Zero was published in 2015. Set in 1992 and narrated by Colonna, a hack journalist working on a Milan newspaper, it offers a satire of Italy's kickback and bribery culture as well as, among many things, the legacy of fascism. Topic. Selected bibliography Topic. Novels Il nome della Rosa 1980, English translation, The Name of the Rose, 1983 Il pendolo di Foucault 1988, English translation, Foucault's Pendulum, 1989 L'Isola del Giorno Prima 1994, English translation, The Island of the Day Before, 1995 Bottolino 2000, English translation, Bottolino, 2001 La Misteriosa Fiamma della Regina Loana 2004, English translation, The Mysterious Flame of Queen Loana, 2005 Il Cimitero di Praga 2010, English translation, The Prague Cemetery, 2011 Numero Zero 2015, English translation, Numero Zero, 2015 Topic. Non-fiction books La ricerca della lingua perfetta nella cultura europea, 1993 N. Il problema estetico in San Tommaso 1956 English translation, The Aesthetics of Thomas Aquinas, 1988, revised Sviluppo dell'estetica medieval. In momenti e problemi di storia dell'estetica, 1959. Art and beauty in the Middle Ages, 1985. Opera aperta, 1962. Rev. 1976. English translation. The open work, 1989. Diario minimo, 1963. English translation. Misreadings, 1993. Apocalyptici e Integrati 1964 partial English translation Apocalypse postponed 1994 La Poetiche di Joyce 1965 English translations The Middle Ages of James Joyce The Aesthetics of Chaosmos 1989 La Struttura Ascente 1968 The Absent Structure Il Costume di Casa 1973 English translation Faith in Fakes Travels in Hyperreality 1986 Trattato di semiotica generale 1975 English translation, A Theory of Semiotics, 1976 Il superuomo di massa 1976 Dalla periferia dell'impero 1977 Lecture in fabula 1979 A semiotic landscape. Panorama semiotique. Proceedings of the First Congress of the International Association for Semiotic Studies, Den Haag, Paris, New York, Mouton equals Approaches to Semiotics, 29 with Seymour Chatman and Jean-Marie Klinkenberg. The Role of the Reader, Explorations in the Semiotics of Texts 1979 English edition containing essays from Opera Aperta, Apocalitici e Integrati, Form del Contenuto 1971, Il Superuomo di Massa, Lecture in Fabula. Sed Anni di Desiderio 1983. Postal al Nome della Rosa 1983 English translation, Postscript to the Name of the Rose, 1984. 
Semiotica e filosofia del linguaggio 1984 English translation, Semiotics and the Philosophy of Language, 1984 De Biblioteca 1986 in Italian and French Lo strano caso della Hanau 1609 1989 French translation, L'Enigma de la Hanau 1609, 1990 I limiti dell'interpretazione 1990 The Limits of Interpretation, 1990 Interpretation and Overinterpretation 1992 with R. Rorty, J. Culler, C. Brooke Rose, edited by S. Collini La ricerca della lingua perfetta nella cultura europea 1993 English translation, The Search for the Perfect Language The Making of Europe, 1995 Six Walks in the Fictional Woods 1994 Incontro, Encounter, Rencontre 1996 in Italian, English, French In Cosa Creed Chi Non Creed? With Carlo Maria Martini, 1996 English translation, Belief or Nonbelief, A Dialogue, 2000 Sink Scritti Morali, 1997 English translation, Five Moral Pieces, 2001 Kant e la Ornitorinco, 1997 English translation, Kant and the Platypus, Essays on Language and Cognition, 1999 Serendipities, Language and Lunacy, 1998 How to Travel with a Salmon and Other Essays, 1998 Partial English translation of Il Seconda Diario Minimo, 1994 La Bustina di Minerva 1999 Experiences in Translation, University of Toronto Press 2000 Sulla Literatura, 2003 English Translation by Martin McLaughlin, on Literature, 2004 Mouse or Rat, Translation as Negotiation 2003 Storia della Belleza 2004, co-edited with Girolamo de Michel, English Translation, History of Beauty, on Beauty, 2004 A Paso di Gambero Guerre called e populismo mediatico Bompiani, 2006 English translation, Turning Back the Clock, Hot Wars and Media Populism, 2007, Alistair McEwen Storia della Bruttiza Bompiani, 2007 English translation, On Ugliness, 2007 Dallalbero al labirinto, Studi storici sul segno e l'interpretazione Bompiani, 2007 English translation, From the Tree to the Labyrinth, Historical Studies on the Sign and Interpretation, 2014, Anthony Old Corn, La Vertigine della Lista, Rizzoli, 2009, English translation, The Infinity of Lists, Costruire il Nemico e Altri Scritti Occasionali, Bompiani, 2011, English translation by Richard Dixon, Inventing the Enemy, 2012, Storia della Terra e dei Luoghi Legendari, Bompiani, 2013, English translation by Alistair McEwen, The Book of Legendary Lands, 2013, Pape Satan Alep, Cronosh di una Società Liquida, Nave di Tessio, 2016, English English translation by Richard Dixon, Chronicles of a Liquid Society 2017, Topic Anthologies Eco, Umberto, Sebiak, Thomas A., eds. 1984, The Sign of Three, Dupin, Holmes, Pierce, Bloomington, Indiana, History Workshop, Indiana University Press, ISBN 978-0-253-35235-410 Essays on Methods of Abductive Inference in Poe's Dupin, Doyle's Holmes, Pierce and many others, 236 pages. Topic books for children Art by Eugenio Carmi La Bamba e il General 1966, Rev. 1988 English translation, The Bomb and the General Harcourt Children's Books J. First edition, February 1989 ISBN 978-0152097004 Itre Cosmonauti 1966 English translation, The Three Astronauts Martin Secker and Warburg Limited, First Edition, the 3rd of April 1989 ISBN 978-0436140945 GLI Nomi D. New 1992 English translation, The Gnomes of New Bompiani, 1, ed. edition 1992 ISBN 978-8845218859 References topic External links Official website Umberto Eco Wiki, Wiki Annotation Guide to Eco's Works Lila Azam Zangana Summer 2008 Umberto Eco, The Art of Fiction No. 197. Paris Review. Webfactory website on Umberto Eco We Like Lists Because We Don't Want to Die Interview by Suzanne Bayer and Lothar Goris. Appearances on C-SPAN Umberto Eco Collected News and Commentary. The Guardian. Er Fascism, New York Review of Books, June, 22, 1995, pp. 12-15. 
Lecture, hold at Columbia University, New York, on April, 24, 1995 on occasion of the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Europe from National Socialism. <laughs>